Hi guys and welcome to today's video on directed numbers. What on earth are directed numbers? You are going to find out in a moment. My name is Darren. Welcome to my channel or my website. It's really good to see you. If you can do me a favor and subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd be deeply, deeply grateful. Or head over to massguru.com where you can sign up, get access to this, downloadable notes, and the fun never starts. Or is it, it never stops. I'm a bit confused. The learning objectives for today are to pretty much understand what a directed number is, how to add and subtract these things and multiply and divide. And believe it or not, in many cases, you've already been doing this. So there are a couple of rules we need to know and a little bit of practice isn't going to hurt. But I think you're going to be guns at this by the end of this video. Now, in the previous video, we looked at a bod mass uh, or bid mass as I use it, which is brackets, indices, division, multiplication, addition and subtraction. And these are all very important things to do because we have to do mass in a particular order. There is an order to everything in life and bid mass is pretty much it. It really isn't. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I don't know why. Half this stuff. Anyway, so if you haven't already watched our previous video, head back and have a look. Again, it's on YouTube or uh, massguru.com. Um, otherwise, stick with us for this general mass course. Now, isn't there only really one direction? Ah, <laughs> directed numbers. One Direction, I know. Do you know how long I try and think up these puns? I wouldn't even know who, well, okay, I know who One Direction are. If you ask me to name these people, no idea. Do you know who they are? Yeah, probably keep that to yourself. I think they're a little bit past it now. Uh, but what is a directed number? Well, as it says here, positive and negative numbers are in fact directed numbers. And I did a bit of a Google search, and it said that directed numbers are those which have a direction and a size. Well, all numbers have a size. We can tell that four is bigger than three. Minus 10 is bigger than minus 2. So that's just in the number system. What's this direction stuff? Well, positives and negatives give us a direction. And one of the great things about directed numbers is a number line can help us visualize them. So 0 is, well, actually my puppy, but that's another story altogether. So here is 0. And what we can see is numbers moving to the right are positive. And the numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger. 1, 2, 3, 4. And numbers to the left are negative and they get smaller and smaller and smaller and they head towards something here called minus infinity and something here called positive infinity to infinity and beyond. That's light you had something on this, I'm telling you. Now you've got to be very careful with number lines because if you don't lump, lump, number them the right way then unfortunately things get a little bit skew with and I have known people uh, and obviously this was just a, a mistake. One, two, three, four and then when Minus four, minus three, minus two, and minus one. Now obviously, no, 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 no. When we have zero uh, in this particular instance, that almost tells me where to start. And then the numbers count up or count down from that zero point. So once you've got a number line, it's great. Do you always need to use a number line? Probably not. Initially, it helps to visualize, but later on, as you do more and more examples, you'll get to be much better. So using a number line to add or subtract. Now when we add numbers on, we generally move that way. And when we subtract numbers, we are going to move that way. Now, later on, that becomes a little bit fudgy, but we'll give it. So example of minus four plus five. Well, this is my start number. So that's effectively where I'm starting. I tend to do a little arrow there. And then plus five, because I'm plusing, I'm going to move to the right five spaces. So one, two, three, four, and five. This is where we end up. So my answer is positive one. Now, we know that, generally speaking, all numbers are positive unless we say otherwise. So we don't really need to write the positive sign. So in that situation, my answer is one. This stuff is freaking awesome. What about five minus seven? Well, five isn't on my number line. So let's put a five on here because I can extend it. And I now want to minus seven. So if I'm going to subtract, I'm going to move to the left. So one, two, three, four, five puts me at zero. 6 and 7 gives me minus 2. In that situation, we must write the minus sign. Why? Because it's important. Absolutely. So minus 2. Now, did you notice what I did there? I actually used 0 as some sort of a reference. And I said, well, okay, I'm taking away 7. How many steps is it from 5 to 0? Well, it's 5, which gives me two more steps to get down to the 7 I'm trying to take away or minus two. And there are lots of tips and tricks we can use as we go through this course. Minus one, minus three. Okay, so here is minus one. I'm subtracting, so I'm gonna move that way. One, two, three places, which puts me at negative four. And I don't know if there's another one. 
And there is another one. Now, I'm going to come back to this brackets thing in a second, but I have to say, I have seen grown adults draw number lines on drawable desks and argue over these things. So don't think it's a bad thing to draw a number line. It really isn't. If that's what you need, draw a number line. Have one in your summary book if you're allowed a summary book. Now, do you notice here we've got a set of brackets? Now, in our previous video, we said brackets must be done first. Yes, bid mass, but there's nothing in that bracket to do. It's seemingly just the number minus one with a set of brackets. So why the brackets? Well, actually, believe it or not, your brain tries to play tricks on you. And it doesn't like small numbers. It does, sorry, it doesn't like small numbers. It doesn't like small um, little lines. And it particularly doesn't like little horizontal lines. It tries to ignore them. Your brain actually actively doesn't see it. So in that situation, the reason we put the bracket sign in is because your brain hit the bracket, it goes, oh, hold on a moment, that's the bracket. And then it notices the minus sign, right? So basically, it's like a visual trick to trick your brain into making sure that you see that minus sign. So again, minus one in brackets is there. I'm still gonna take away the three that gets me to minus four, but the brackets were just trying to help me say, hello, there's a minus sign here, don't forget me. Now the next set of rules, and there are lots of rules, you've already got the bid mass uh, in your uh, summary book, so now we've got the plus and plus. So this are four rules about multiplying and dividing negative numbers. Now it's not just multiplying and dividing, actually these rules come in handy later on when we add and subtract as well. So what I want to say to you is, when you multiply and divide, if you have a positive and a positive number, they multiply to give a positive number. If I have a negative number and a negative number, they will multiply to give me a positive number. A positive number and a negative number will always give me a negative number, and a negative and a positive will always give me a negative. So those are the rules, okay? So when you multiply or divide, those are the rules. But actually, it goes a little bit further that if I see a negative and a negative beside each other, they also become a positive. So again, those four rules, really useful. Have them in your summary book somewhere. Now there's another way of remembering them, and I remember them like this. When the signs are the same, so plus and plus, and a minus and a minus, they always become a plus. When the signs are different, so that's a plus and a minus, or a minus and a plus, they always become a negative, all right? So that's just another way of remembering it. Therefore, I'm here to help you. So let's use this now. Now, as we can see, trying to know when to use these rules is the key to math, believe it or not. So I've got the, I've got the question here of six minus 13. I'm not multiplying and I'm not dividing, so I'm not using those rules. And I don't see two pluses or a plus and a minus or a minus and a minus together. So this is just standard. This is like saying, here's my number line, here is zero, I'm at the number six and I'm going 13 this way. So I can go to zero, which is gonna give me six moves. How many moves have I got left out of the 13 to get there? Well, 13 minus six is seven, so that gives me negative seven. And again, this is six moves, that is seven moves, which when I add those two together, give me the 13 moves, which gives me the answer at minus seven. Now, lots of people just know this stuff. Don't worry about it if you don't, it takes practice. Other people actually can reverse these, and it becomes minus 13, plus six, now again, oh, going a little bit further, there's a plus in front of that six. Remember, we don't really need to write it, but we do need to make sure that we realize that that minus sign belongs to the 13. And again, if I have minus 13, which is down here, let's imagine that's zero, there's minus 13, and I'm jumping six, then it's gonna take me to minus seven. It's gotta be a negative number, because I've got to move 13 spaces just to get to zero before I even hit the positive numbers. Oh, brackets and a minus sign. That's just my brain's gone. Oh, I can see a bracket. Oh, no, now I see the minus sign. So again, I'm now really at minus five, minus 11. Can you see two negative signs? Yes, you can. Does that make a positive? No, it doesn't. Why? Because they've got to be together or a multiply and divide. So in this situation, again, it's just a standard sum. Here is zero. Here is minus five. Which way am I moving? I'm moving to the left. I'm moving further away from zero. So my number's gonna get more negative. And if I move 11 places down, I'm gonna get minus 16. I quite like number lines, believe it or not. I, I, I think they're actually quite elegant. 
And I also know that I probably would want to get the right answer. Now, this is where we start to get tricked. This is where you have to start to look for the tricks. So we've got nine minus minus seven. Do you hear what I just said there? I went minus minus. Minus minus doesn't even sound right, but my brain is now going minus minus, they're the same, it's a plus. So I'm gonna use, which rule is it this one here? I know I'm not multiplying or dividing, but I have a minus and a minus together, and I know I can use the rule for that. So a minus and a minus becomes a plus. So I just change that now to nine plus seven, which gives me 16. Now we can funnily enough use a number line for this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna write the number nine. Now, when I take away, I move this way. So that minus sign tells me to move to the left. But this minus sign tells me to actually move to the left, but backwards, i.e. move to the right, do the opposite of what I was expecting. So that's why the minus and the minus become a plus. They actually sort of cancel each other out. What about this one here? Two sets of brackets. My God, so many brackets. It's fine, don't worry about it. It's minus 10, minus, minus nine. Oh, hello, minus, 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 minus. Minus, minus becomes a plus. So I've got minus 10, plus nine. Oh, I've got a minus and a plus now, yes? No, because they've got to be together, like they were here, they were together. Or that has to be a times or a divide. I don't have any of that, so it's not useful to me at the moment. So now again, I am at minus 10. I am adding on nine. Will I get to zero and positive numbers? No, because I would need to move 10 spaces to do that. And so if I now move the nine places, I get to negative one. So that's gonna give me minus one. Seems like a lot of examples, don't there? But there really are, well, there are actually, but I'm trying to show you. Now, what do we notice? Aha, we have a time sign in it. So I have five times negative three. Now, this is we didn't put the brackets in there. My brain wanted to miss that minus sign. Trust me, I don't know whether yours does. You're probably looking at me going, what are you, nutter? I know. So in this situation here, this is what I always do first. I ignore the signs. And you're gonna say, signs, there's only one there. No, there isn't. Remember, in front of the plus five, there is a little plus. We don't write it normally, but it's there. And I always look at the time sign thing first. So I look at that as just five times three. And I write my answer down as 15. Then I go back and I look at the signs because I know that a positive times a negative gives me absolutely a negative. So my answer there becomes negative 15. What about this one here? Two sets of brackets, we get it. So we've got minus eight times minus seven. It's a time, so I can use my rules. But while I can use my rules, I'm gonna do the multiplication first. Eight times seven is 56. That's the time sign done. Now let's look at the signs. I've got a negative times a negative, which gives me a positive. And do I write the positive? Nope, don't need to, and job done. Let's do a division. Right, now whenever we do a division sign, oh, whatever. So it gives me minus 16 divided by four. Now first things first, what's in front of the four? It is a positive sign. I'm just gonna write it in for the time being. I've got to divide. So I can do divide. I can do 16 divided by four. How many fours are in 16? Four. That's the division done. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna look at the signs. A negative and a positive, they're different, so it becomes negative. There we go, negative four. Oh, minus 60 divided by minus five. Now, I'm pretty sure you guys are all guns at this now because you're pretty sure like, yeah, I can do this. So, is there a divide sign? Yes, yeah, so we can use our rules, but let's do the division first. 60 divided by five. How many fives going to 60? Oh, 12, I know that one. So 12, I've got a minus and a minus, which gives me, they are the same, so it gives me a plus. There's a plus, do I need to write it? Nope, and so my answer is simply 12. Whoa, division and division and division, that doesn't matter. When you do these type of questions, you do a bit, get an answer, do another bit. So I get minus 100 divided by minus four, divided by minus five. Okay, so I'm actually gonna do that bit there first. So I'm gonna do 100 divided by four. Now you could fire up your calculator. I know that 100 divided by four is the same as having half of 100 and halve it again. So that gives me 25. And a minus and a minus gives me a plus. Congratulations, not gonna write it. So that's the first bit done. 
I'm going to write down everything I haven't yet used, which was the divide sign, which is this bit here. I'm just going to copy it down line by line. And again, if you haven't watched my previous video, lines of working out may seem like a real chore. I promise you they're not. You'll make less mistakes if you do a line by line approach. 25 divided by minus 5. Well, we know that's plus 25. We've got to divide. Let's do that first. 5 is into 25. Go 5 times. And I have a plus and a minus, which gives me a minus. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is my final answer. Ooh, I think this is our last question. Now, we're, the next video, funny enough, is going to be deal with powers and floaty numbers and what have you. Now, what on earth does that floaty 2 mean? It means multiply the thing by itself. So I've got minus 3 squared is the same as minus 3 times minus 3. So the floaty 2 tells you to multiply the thing in the brackets by itself twice. Fabulous. Having written it out the long way, I can see that I've got a time, so my rules apply. I've got 3 times 3, which is 9, and a minus and a minus, which gives me a plus. And there we go. I am done. Thank you very much. So directed numbers, pluses and minuses. Make sure you know those four rules. Put them in your summary book, learn them, and do a load of examples. Because the quicker and quicker and quicker you get at this, the oh, you will be a gun at this course. Trust me. And for further maths as well. Remember, this course is building up to further maths. The more working out you show, the better. But I'm done. Thank you very much. If you haven't already done so, click over to my uh, YouTube channel and subscribe. I would be deeply, deeply grateful. MathsGuru.com, head over there and subscribe. It is free to sign up, uh, but otherwise uh, I'm checking out. I hope to see you in another video. Take care, stay safe, and bye-bye.